What's going on? It's Ron with 518 Painters and today I want to show you guys how we paint oak kitchen cabinets. So when it comes to painting oak kitchen cabinets, or pretty much any kitchen cabinet, 90% of it really depends on your prep. So if you get your prep right, you're almost guaranteed to succeed. Now in the painting trade, everybody has their own method and they use their own products, uh, whatever works best for them. So I'm not saying this is the end all be all method, but I'm just going to, I just want to share with you guys what we do at 518 Painters to make sure our old kitchen cabinets come out beautiful and they last. So the first thing you want to do is you want to clean and degrease your surfaces. Uh, what we like to use is crud cutter or M1 deglosser. Basically what you do is you just take some M1 deglosser, put about 16 ounces into a cup and take a fine scruffy pad, um, a Brillo pad, and make sure you clean all the edges, all the corners and everything and make sure that you don't miss a spot and you get all the dirt and grease and grime off because nothing, uh, whether it's the primer or the paint will really adhere to grease. So right after we clean the surfaces with the M1 deglosser, we go ahead and take a damp rag and wipe off all the surfaces because if you let it dry, the um, M1 deglosser, what it does, it leaves like a, a, a weird film, like a milky film behind. So make sure you wipe it right away uh, and then you can avoid having to clean that off later. Now, once all the surfaces are dry, we go ahead and sand everything with a 220 grit sandpaper or a fine sanding sponge. Now, after we're done sanding everything, we'll drill two holes right on the opposite side of where the pulleys are. That's where our cup hooks are going to go so we can hang the doors later and spray them. After we do that, we'll dust off the entire surfaces. Uh, sometimes we'll take a vacuum, a shop vac, and vacuum all surfaces, and sometimes we'll just blow it off with the compressor. In addition to that, we'll take a blue tack rag and kind of just wipe all the surfaces, just to make sure that there's nothing left on that surface. So since oak cabinets are kind of drainy and uh, it's hard to get the primer in there if you spray it, what we like to do is we like to brush and roll our primer, and we use a oil-based primer. So you want to make sure that you kind of push the primer into the grain and into the crease and into the little crevices because when you come back and do your second coat and then you do your two top coats, you don't want to end up with um, grain that hasn't been filled because uh, it really stands out, especially when you're doing light cabinets, like let's say a white or a cream color. Uh, you'll end up with like um, a dark grainy look and uh, you want to avoid that by actually fill in the grain with the primer as much as you can. Now you could go ahead and fill all of the grain with a wood filler. We like to use Bondo, which is an auto body filler. But keep in mind, that's a lot of extra work, a lot of extra sanding. So you wanna account for that when you're pricing out your kitchen cabinets, uh, if you're doing it for somebody else, or if you're doing it for, for yourself and you wanna make sure that you have the time to actually do it because it adds on a lot of hours. So after the oil base primer dried, we'll go ahead sand everything smooth with a uh, sanding sponge, a fine sanding sponge, and then we'll go ahead and uh, blow it off again with the compressor or we'll vacuum it, use a tack rag and wipe it off, make sure there's no debris, no dust left. For our second primer coat, we like to use Benjamin Moore Fresh Start. Uh, it's an amazing primer, it's a high build primer, and what it does, it leaves you with a fresh, blank, white canvas. After the second coat of primer is dry, we'll go ahead, repeat everything, uh, make sure the surfaces are smooth, hit it with a, uh, you know, scuff it up with the uh, fine sanding sponge, go ahead, blow it off, vacuum, take a tack rag and uh, wipe everything off just to make sure that there's no debris left. After all the surfaces are clean, we'll go ahead and get ready for our top coats. So as far as top coats, um, this is a big discussion amongst professional painters. Let me just say this, everybody has their own method, everybody has their own products that they like. Um, I'm not saying this is the, you know, this, these are the products that you should use, that you have to use. You know, I'm just making a suggestion of what works for us. But, you know, you could use a, a pre-cat lacquer, you could use an oil-based finish, you know, some might use a water-based finish. So everybody has kind of their own uh, uh, method and their own um, product, their own go-to products that they like. What works for us, uh, we like to use, we, well, we used to use uh, Benjamin Moore Advance, which is a great product, um, dries really nice, really super hard. The only thing um, 
the only downside to that it has like a 16 hour dry time before you can actually recoat so you know that kind of prolongs everything and um you know after a while it didn't work out for us too too much because it was kind of you know dragging uh dragging out some projects so we went ahead and switched products uh now what we like to use is uh there's two products that we kind of that, that are kind of like our go-to uh, products, which is uh, one is the PPG Breakthrough, uh, the high VOC, the 250. The other one is a product called Evo by Gemini, which is like a water-based lacquer. Both of these products uh, spray super nice. There's not much of a learning curve to it. They uh, dry really hard, really durable, and um, they have a super nice finish. But let me say this. Uh, if you decide to try the PPG Breakthrough, make sure you use the high VOC. What we did in the past is uh, we used the low VOC and uh, sprayed nice. Uh, the finish was uh, nice too. And um, about a year later, we got a callback from a customer. Uh, matter of fact, we got like three callbacks saying that um, some of the handles are turned out to be very gummy. So we kind of, you know, we, we called our uh, distributor and uh, they explained to us that the hand oils are causing that. What happens is, you know, especially the ones that were being used a lot, right around the uh, right around the pulley, you, they turn like a real gummy, real uh, smush, squishy, uh, which was kind of annoying because we had to go back and take them off, sand them, uh, respray them with the high VOC. Um, but lesson learned, and uh, I'm just saying this so that you guys don't make that mistake uh, and you can avoid the. Uh, pretty much a headache. So we like to spray everything with two top coats, which I believe should be the standard in the uh, industry anyways. You should always do two top coats. So we have a little method where we take uh, clothes hangers and uh, we hang our doors to spray them and dry. Uh, we'll hang them on some uh, cloth clothing racks, which we got online for pretty cheap actually. And uh, that kind of works for us. Another thing that you wanna be aware of is wherever you're spraying your doors and drawers, wherever you're hanging them to dry, you want to make sure that the room temperature and the moisture of uh, the humidity of the room is according to what it says, what is specified on your product. Another thing that you want to follow is the actual recoat time of your product. So if it says two hours, make sure you wait those two hours because if you don't, what can happen is uh, while you're, while you, when you spray your first coat and you let it dry maybe for an hour, but it calls for two hours, there are still gases and, 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 and moisture, uh, you know, ex escaping that first coat. So if you go ahead and, and, and paint over this, the first coat and let that dry, uh, you might get away with it. But later, later on down the line, what can happen is those gases still want to come out and uh, it could cause chipping and cracking. And you just want to avoid that. So be patient and, and actually wait the uh, times that your, that your product tells you to because uh, those times are there for a reason. And... Trust me, I learned the hard way. So after we do our, after we spray our second coat, we like to let everything dry for about 24 hours. Uh, then we get ready to ship them out to the customer and uh, get ready to reinstall them. Well, that's our method of how we paint old kitchen cabinets. I hope this was helpful to some of you. And if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you love it, hit that subscribe button. And I'll catch you later.